at it again. It's another edition of the NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show. I am your host, Rick Saratella. We're moving. We're grooving. We can't stop. Saratella. Won't stop getting closer to the third annual Top Gridiron Showcase and Symposium. Testing out some new equipment here. That's live radio, and uh, we're really excited to bring to you the third annual College Gridiron Showcase and Symposium in Bedford, Texas. We will be having our College Gridiron Showcase roster announcement show tomorrow. That's Wednesday, December 28th, 2016, 10 a.m. on location at the Parabolic Performance and Rehab NFL Combine Training Facilities in Hackensack, New Jersey. We will announce the rosters. We are uh, anticipating a few of the players on the show as well. So with that being said, we hope you tune in. You can watch the live stream on the College Gridiron Showcase website, cgsallstar.com. And today we'll be talking to one of the quarterbacks in the College Gridiron Showcase and Symposium. He is none other than Bryant quarterback Dalton Easton. He joins us today on the Defiance Fuel Water Hotline. We welcome him into the show right now, as a matter of fact. And how are we doing today, Dalton? I'm great, Mr. Sarasota. How are you? Doing great. And, uh, you know, we're excited to see you showcase your talents down at the College Gridiron Showcase in Bedford, Texas. And I believe you also competed in the FCS Scout Bowl, uh, from my understanding. So let's start there. Uh, how was that experience? What did you take away from it? And uh, what are we looking forward to moving on to the showcase? Oh, that was a great experience. Um, it was an honor to be able to go down to Daytona Beach and compete down there. Uh, I learned a lot, you know, uh, especially learning that there's a lot of good talent no matter what school you go to. So if you're gonna ask, even if you're at a small school, you know those kids can play just as well as the big schools. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to the showcase on the 7th and can't wait to get started on that. Well, you know, since you brought it up, let's head over to that small school label that you'll be fighting coming from Bryant College. I'm uh, very familiar with the program. I went to school up in Providence, Rhode Island at Johnson & Wales University, so I have my finger on the pulse oh, really? somewhat with the football uh, program. Yes, I do, and we never leave a stone unturned here at the NFL Draft Bible, but uh, Dalton, you know... What What is it like playing with that chip on your shoulder? Do, does it give you an extra edge? Do you feel like there's a little more something to prove? Because when you get down to Bedford, Texas, there's going to be players from the FBS, the FCS, the Power Five. Does that come into the equation at all when you suit up? Or do you think that will just kind of be put out of mind once you lace them up? Oh, no, definitely. I, I think um, I play with a chip on my shoulder. Coming from a small school, I have done that all my life. But it's got to be a controlled trip, if that makes sense. You know, being a quarterback, you can't really get overly excited or out of control. You have to stay within yourself and, and stay focused. And I think I can put, put that trip on my shoulder, but also stay focused and within myself and not get out, not play outside of myself, if that makes sense. No doubt. And, you know, we, uh, we've been bringing you the names you need to know here on the NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show for over a decade here on Blog Talk Radio, and Dalton, you know, uh, the, the one thing that stands out about you is uh, a very intricate offense, very complex offensive scheme, a pro-style type of attack, and there's probably a, a, a big portion of our audience who may be hearing about you for the first time. There could be an NFL scout out there uh, looking to gather more information on you, so Let's hear from you. I mean, take us through that Bryant offense, the uh, complex kind of scheme that you ran, and, you know, maybe hit us with one of your favorite plays when, you know, a good play was called in the huddle and you kind of start licking your chops saying, hey, you know what, we got an opportunity for six here. Well, the offense, uh, it was definitely very, very complex. Um, I originally went to the University of Akron out of high school, and that offense in comparison to what Bryant was – you know, much easier to learn. We would install it within three days. And then I got to Bryant, my first spring there, it took about a week and a half, almost two weeks, and installed a full playbook. Um, so that was a big change to me. It was a big kind of shock almost. I, I didn't think that would be the case at Bryant. Um, but, I mean, it it's a very, very complex offense, very detailed. And, and when, you, when you get a bunch of guys who buy into the offense and um, do their part, you know, it, it really clicked at times. And I guess my favorite play would be uh, well, one that I know always scores. When we get in the red zone, right around like the 20 yard line after the sudden change, we always go to gun left, slot, zoom, fake Ringo, wheel, H wheel, swing. Um, that's just 
model and that's kind of a shorter version of it. Uh, we can also do a bunch of tags with it, but I don't really want to get too detailed in the offense and give away their stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt about it. It sounds like you're ready for Gruden camp, but uh, can we stick with that one play? Can you take take me through, like, when you're walking up the line of scrimmage on that one particular play, what are you reading? Are you reading the safety? Are you reading the alignment, the box? And then take us through your progressions, if you don't mind. Well, first, first check always is the box on um, the offense. Uh, gotta get make sure we have good numbers to run the ball. In a pass play, probably as important. We still it's a habit at this point in my career, so I just always check the box. Um, we start off with so we're in the gun, the back, the back, the fullback to my right, half back to my left. I didn't have on the right side, but the receiver to the right. Um, we have the we have the guy in motion from the left, so that it determines the coverage for me. Uh, once I see man, I know it's easy touchdown, basically. How, pretty much how it was. We ran it. Um, so I got to snap, fake inside zone to the, left, the back of my left. Uh, I know I'm hot if I, if I get two up my right side um, for the swing, which is my hot throw. And then I go from the post to the wheel and the extra wheel behind it. So it's kind of tricky for a defense. You know, we get a post coming with a wheel. And normally, both offenses only run one wheel up the sideline. That we have the back coming uh, free release and up the sideline as well. And then the other back to my left ends up in the flat with a swing route um, for my hot throw. We're talking to Dalton Easton, Bryant, quarterback here on the NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show. As you can tell by listening to him speak, very intelligent quarterback. And Dalton, I must tell you, I've probably gotten close to 50 player uh, questionnaire interviews filled out already. And yours was one of the most, if not the most uh, elaborate, well-written perfect grammar interviews uh, that I've received of the bunch. And uh, it's a very rare thing, believe it or not, that uh, players are unable to uh, submit uh, a well-written interview. And yours had no flaws, and that kind of stood out to me. So I am um, thinking here that you are probably big on studying the playbook, big on film study tendencies. How much time do you spend in the film room and... You know, you said you picked up the Akron playbook in about three days. How long did it take to kind of master this Bryant playbook? Well, thank you for the compliments, first of all. Um, you know, the Bryant playbook, um, you have an idea of it after the first week uh, first week and a half of install. Um, you kind of know, I write, okay, I didn't go to the right, and everyone else, where everyone else finds up. But you don't really have a master, you know, like the back of your hand for like, I would say a full spring or maybe even a full camp. Um, I got there in spring of, I want to say, 13, maybe 14, um, if I'm not mistaken. And it took me the full spring and then the training camp up until that season for me to really have a comfortable grip and understanding of the offense. Um, but up until my, and then my, when I became a senior, you know, I was kind of just rolling up my tongue. It was part of me, you know, that kind of. It was, I knew it at the back of my hand, honestly. It was, it was very easy to learn. And, and once you master an offense like that, it kind of it helps you a lot. You know, it's hard to stop on defense. You know, Dalton, as the quarterback, uh, teammates are always looking at you as the leader, whether good or bad. The quarterback, whether good or bad, takes probably too much credit when you win, maybe too much blame when you lose. But during times of adversity, players are always going to look at the quarterback body language. What's his reaction? How's he responding on the sideline? And, you know, one of the telling tales of a football team is always what happens on the sideline. I'm curious to know, as the quarterback of Bryant, were you a guy that, you know, took a guy aside and spoke to him one-on-one? -on -one? Did you immediately correct him uh, on the field? Did you uh, have to ever, you know, call the team together? at the halftime and, and, and be the one to speak up or call a players only meeting? What kind of leader are you? And give us an example of where your leadership came into play during your career. Um, I think I'm a, you know, when I first got to Brian, I wasn't really as vocal as I normally am. Um, I was more to myself, just put my head down, work hard and kind of try to lead by example. Um, but as my career went on, I kind of realized that, you know, you need to speak up and lead by example wasn't really enough. Um, yeah, you know, it's both your opinion, you know, uh, by the time I was a senior, I was 23 years old, so I was a lot older than most of the guys, and 
in reality, they kind of looked up to guys like me and the other captains on the team. Um, so I, I kind of became more of a vocal leader as I was there for longer. Um, I mean, every game is adversity, so you got to kind of stay, stay fiery, stay, stay aggressive, stay focused on the game and not get, you know, distracted by, oh, wow, we're up 21 points right now. We can just, you know, let loose to the rope. Uh, you got to really stay intact and together. Uh, and I think that was kind of my role uh, as one of the captains was to kind of keep the team together as a unit. Um, you know, help the young guys on offense because we have a lot of young guys on offense this year, especially at running back. Um, and I just kind of had to, you know, with, with, in the huddle, you know, to make sure he knew what he was doing, the running back was doing. He, uh, when we got to the sound, uh, he messed up, you know, let me tell and get the next play, we'll, we'll correct it and film. Uh, we got to win the team right now, you should move on. Um, there's probably a couple games this year where we had a, you know, talk at halftime as an offense, especially. Uh, we weren't really clicking like we used to be, like we usually are. Um, I thought, you know, the starters together, yeah, I think, you know, it is, it is what we do. You know, we're one of the best offense in the conference. You know, um, we've had success all year. Don't don't think just because we've had a bad quarter or a bad half or bad drive, that means that we're going to have a bad game. You know, come to halftime, make your corrections, make your, you know, adjustments, and then go out there in the second half and, and, and do what we've been doing all year, which is putting the points and putting the good yards and keep the defense off the field. Um, so I think I'm a, a vocal leader who works very hard. Um, doesn't really, you know, I'm pretty humble, I would say. I don't like talking about myself at all. Um, but, you know, I, I think I'm a vocal leader who works hard. It's a team player, and, and it's really about winning. Yeah, big points, big plays. He is Bryant quarterback Dalton Easton, a name you need to know for the 2017 NFL Draft, and we'll be following Dalton's path to the draft over at NFL Draft Bible at NFLDraftBible.com. And we mentioned the accolades, Dalton, uh, all NEC, all New England uh, selection, school record, 2,855 passing yards this past season, 28 touchdown passes, a Northeast Conference record of all time single season, and then single season school records for completions, attempts, yards per game, and total offense, uh, what was the reason for this great success this past year and throughout your collegiate career? Dalton, who do you give the credit to here? Aside from yourself performing, was it a coaching? Was it the offensive line? Was it team chemistry? Was it senior leadership? Maybe all of the above, but what were the key ingredients to your success, do you feel? I think it was all of the above, um, a little bit of everything. Uh, first of all, the coaches did a great job of, you know, like I said before, it's all on your offense and taking the time and having the patience to, to really get detailed. And, and, and even though it takes a week and a half, by the time that week and a half is over, we really have a big grasp on it. Um, the offensive line for the three years that I started there was phenomenal. Um, I think we had at least one all-conference guy every year. Uh, they worked really hard. They always had my back on the field. Um, they practiced hard. They played hard. They, they, you know, they were great guys up front. Uh, I had a great running back my first two years, and I had a good group of guys this se- my senior year. But really, uh, Rico McClay was amazing at running back a couple years ago in my junior year. Uh, I had two big tight ends, John Mapp and Ryan Bear, who were both six five plus. Uh, the receiving core this year was just out of it was unbelievable. That's the school that ever had. Um, great, you know, mixture of everything: a possession receiver, an explosive guy. A guy to go to, you know, on third and long, you can get a big catch. Um, you know, it, it was a great, great fit for this program, for this offense. And I think this year it really showed the most um, with three senior receivers, four senior offensive linemen, and then me as a senior at quarterback. I think it, it really ex- exploded and exploited defenses this year. Um, it was definitely a team effort. The offensive line was probably the fastest in this whole, you know, success. Um, and then the receivers this year were phenomenal. And then I had a good run game my whole career, so that was pretty good, too. Very good. How about, um, you know, Dalton, let's talk about some of your personal skill sets and your strengths and weaknesses. If you can, give us a little self-scouting report of your game, what you do well, what you feel like are your best attributes, and maybe something uh, that you're going to work on trying to get better at between now and the NFL draft. Okay, um, I think my some of my strengths would be, you know, leadership, first and foremost. Um, then accuracy, I would say. Uh, I, I, I really work hard on being accurate. 
uh, I stress, you know, about my hair going 100%. When we get to stellium practice, at least 90% and above. Um, and then when we get to team period, being 80, 80% or above. So that when we get to the game, I can try and be around 60 to 70%. Um, and that's kind of what our coach taught the quarterbacks and, and preached with us. Um, I think my arm strength, you know, people think it's not that strong. Um, but I, I, I think it's different. I think my arm's plenty strong enough. Uh, I think the fact that I'm accurate and so great timing. Um, that I don't have to throw it as hard sometimes, but when I have to throw it and fire it in there, I, I can make that throw as well. Um, I also think, you know, I'm not an explosive runner in the open field, but I, I uh, have good pocket awareness, pocket mobility, um, and I scramble to throw. Uh, I've been told since I was little that, you know, receivers play receiver for a reason, running back play running back for a reason, and you're a quarterback. Get them the ball. Uh, don't try to run. We, we scramble, look down on field, and try to find one of those guys. Is, is that usually most of the time better running for the ball in their hand and the bigger play. So that's kind of my mindset in college is, you know, once I scramble, well, don't pass my scrimmage if there's someone downfield that's open. You know, find him. If not, then get out of the house, fly, whatever you got to do. But try and find your playmakers. Um, I think that's one of my good attributes. Uh, as far as weaknesses, definitely, I'd be looking at me, I'm short, um, just under six foot, probably like, at six foot. Um, I'm not fast, like I said, and, you know, my arm strength, it, it can get stronger, of course, you know, he's always room for improvement with stuff like that, and I think that that's what I'm going to work on a lot right now is my speed um, with my 40 and my 5'10 my high shuttle, and then my arm strength, you know, I'm going to try and get my arm as strong as I can so I have confidence when I'm going to my career or wherever I end up, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the world you'll be diving into. Uh, obviously, you got the Cos Gridiron Showcase coming up next week, and then uh, once you get that in the rearview mirror, it'll be strictly these combine testing type of drills that you mentioned. And I'm curious to know how an intelligent guy like you was able to navigate through the agent selection process and figuring out where you're going to train and how to schedule it all into your routine. Uh, have you weeded through that situation yet? Is that a still a uh, fluid process? And uh, a lot of times it could be very overwhelming from the end of the season uh, to the start of combine training. There's a lot of big decisions you have to make in a short period of time. Yeah, um, I basically have it sorted out now. I guess I, I'm training. Um, I'm kind of in a break right now to speak at uh, Bomber Real Performance Systems in North Miami. Um, I kind of have a connection with one of my old friends, who's friends with Pete Bomber Real, who's the leader of this, or the owner of this, this uh, program. And I've uh, been here and trained up to the pro today. Um, and that was kind of an easy decision. You know, I came here last summer, worked here a couple of months, and it was it was great work. But I got much more exposure to Bomber and all of that stuff that you need. Um, so I kind of expected to come here close to home. Um, there's a lot of guys come in uh, for the 2017 draft that bring here too, so it's a good competition. Um, and as far as agent, you know, I, I, I'm with Jim Horrid. He represented uh, Bobby Sewell, who's his little brother, played on my team, and he was looking, watching my games with, and, um, with Bobby, and he said, you want to represent me, so that's going to be my agent, and then I'm trained at Bomber Real Performance Systems in North Miami, Florida. All right, well, you're going to be around uh, some big-time prospects at Bomberinos. You'll be around some big-time prospects at the College Gridiron Showcase, and you'll be around a lot of NFL scouts, so you have a chance to flaunt your skill set. Now, a uh, couple last ones here, Dalton, as we wind down. We've been talking on the field, X's and O's, between the lines. How about outside the lines? Give us a, a little bit of uh, what Dalton Easton's personality is like. What do you like to do with your spare time? you have a hobby of anything when you're not playing football? Any kind of music uh, favorites you want to share with us? Something we don't might not know about Dalton Easton off the field. <laughs> uh, well, being from Miami, I do a lot of fishing and stuff. I've been doing stuff little. Um, my dad, actually, his, his first job when he was 18 was to uh, spearfish for like a, a boat and he was one of the, the workers which was a spear fisherman and he would get their fish for the day and give it to home and he'd get paid off of that. So he's kind of been doing that all his life and kind of engraved that with me and my brothers and sisters. Um, so I do a lot of spear fishing, a lot of uh, fishing in my off time. And other than that, you know, I kind of just relax. I play some basketball every once in a while which I'm not very good at but it's fun to go and, and play a little bit with my brothers and some friends. Um, but you know, just 
when I'm home, I like to spend time with my family and relax. Uh, kind of get away from all the madness of college and training and all that. Um, and whenever I get a chance, you know, go fishing, go, go, go catch some fish and eat with my friends and family. You know, I'm kind of a laid back kind of guy. Uh, nothing, nothing really crazy. All right. Well, I guess with the with the uh, spear fishing, I guess the pinpoint accuracy started at an early age with the hand eye coordination. And you know, I'm gonna get you out of here because I know you are at your training facility, and I want you to get your work in. But we always end every episode here on the NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show with this final question: If I'm an NFL general manager, I want you to tell me why I should draft Dalton Easton. Because he's a hard worker with a great attitude and always wants to get better. Um, he's a, a great world to win. And, um, you know, he's going to work hard and achieve whatever that team needs, that needs him to achieve, whether it's being the backup, being a starter. Um, he's, he's willing to do whatever his, his role is for the team um, and will be well prepared and work as hard as he possibly can to, to be the best at that, at that role assigned to him as he can. Um, he's going he's to be accurate, have a good enough, good enough strong enough arm with good timing and, and work hard up, coming, uh, up until his pro day in order to be prepared and ready to get uh, picked up for camp this summer. And spoken like a well-prepared quarterback, uh, that was going to be my last one, but since you mentioned the pro day, will you have a uh, pro day at Bryant University, or will it, would, do you not know that yet? Uh, I don't think there will be a one at Bryant. Um, if there hasn't been in the past, uh, I think it's going to be the same this year. Um, so far, it looks like we're going to at Boston College. Um, that's not 100% set in stone yet, but it's pretty close. So I'm trying to get into my Boston College and then maybe even go back to Akron uh, for a pro day if that uh, if, like, regulations or rules and regulations wise is allowed to the NFL. So I'm talking with my agent and we're going to sort it out before the time comes. Very good. Uh, and, you know, we can always chat more in Bedford, Texas. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person and getting to scout you up close and personal, as will all 32 NFL teams. So uh, we appreciate you taking some time out of a, a busy, hectic schedule. And, uh, again, we look forward to seeing you down at the College Gridiron Showcase in Bedford, Texas. And uh, thank you very much, Dalton, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I look forward to uh, competing down there in Texas and having fun. Thank you again. All right, you got it. That's Bryant quarterback Dalton Easton on the NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show here, presented by Defiance, Defiance Fuel Water. Uh, definitely check out Defiance Fuel Water at defiancefuel.com, and uh, we will have more Player Spotlight interviews leading up to the 2017 NFL Draft. Of course, we have the College Gridiron Showcase and Symposium roster announcement show tomorrow, Wednesday, December 28th, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, on location at the Parabolic Performance and Rehab NFL Combine Training Facilities, Hackensack, New Jersey. I will be live announcing the roster along with Craig Red, Jose Jefferson, the co-founders of the event. Of course, we also have some very exciting announcements coming on the NFLDraftBible.com. You can follow all of our information on the social media world. We do a good job of posting everything and anything on Twitter, at NFL Draft Bible. Once again, your host, Rick Saratella here, signing off.